Hello everybody, welcome to the new 2022 Toyota Tundra. Uh, this is the Tundra Limited, and I'm here with the amazingly talented, professional, friendly, and Tundra knowledgeable Larry Chen, uh, Larry Chen Photo. Uh, this is great because Larry owns a last generation Tundra. It's modified a little bit, which we'll talk about in a second. Just a smidge. Just a smidge. And, but this, has, this one does have a lot of changes. Um, the biggest one is the V8 engine is gone. This has a twin turbo V6. It makes uh, 389 horsepower and 480 pound-feet of torque, which is a jump of about 80 pound-feet from the V8. There's no more V8 available in the Tundra lineup. The big engine is going to be a hybrid assist. They put a hybrid pack uh, attached to this motor and it makes a bunch more power, a bunch more torque, raises the tow limit, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, but there's also a bunch of other changes they've made to this truck and many to which you can speak to. Uh, the big one is the multi-link rear, right? Yeah, that is the biggest thing that you'll notice right away versus the previous generation Tundra. The leaf springs are gone. That bounciness is gone when you go over just the slightest bump on the highway or on the city streets. I did have a chance to drive my Tundra stock for like a little bit. Okay. Like maybe 50 miles <laughs> um, before I cut it up and made it a wide body. Uh, the Tundra that I built essentially is like a Raptor Tundra, right? So it is 37 inch tires, stock body, and it's only two inches uh, narrower than the current generation Raptor. Okay. So it, it's just something that I wanted to do that Toyota didn't do. But with that said, um, just driving this just a couple minutes, I could see so many improvements just from the stock uh, previous generation or the current generation Tundra. Well, what, what leaps out at you first? You already mentioned the suspension, which yeah. rides better. It's a multi-link in the rear. They've done a bunch of changes to the frame, but the big one is uh, the multi-link rear, and they put the shocks on the outside instead of the inside of the frame. And, of course, the leaf springs are gone. This one has the uh, optional air suspension with uh, you know normal shocks. But what else did you notice when you drove? Well, um, first thing that I noticed, of course, is the steering wheel feels so much better. It feels a lot more premium. Um, even on the highest trim steering wheels that you can get on the previous generation. I just feel like they just didn't really do the job um, in terms of how expensive the truck is. You know, the truck is very expensive, yeah. especially if you get a TRD Pro, it's completely optioned out. It is an expensive vehicle, and I feel like the steering wheel needs to just represent that. Um, but more so, the, I think the options is what I'm really impressed with like for example the fact that you can get a six and a half foot bed with the crew cab that is very big that is so big in fact I specifically looked for um, just the double cab version to have a six and a half foot bed on my Tundra because I figured look I'm gonna use this to chase off-road racing I'm gonna use it to chase Baja 1000 I need to have a, a spare 37 inch tire, spare fuel, jack, all of that stuff. And that fits a lot better in a six and a half foot bed. And plus when you're chasing Baja, really you don't actually need that much space. It's me and my co-driver. Um, Previously you could only get the shorter bed with the four doors and now you can get the middle size bed. You can also get the Tundra with like an 8.1 foot bed, but that's only with the smaller cap. And that's if you're transporting tons of stuff in the, in the bed. Um, which is now a composite bed. It's got some aluminum blended into it. It's a little bit lighter. It can hold about 2,000 pounds worth of payload. It's kind of interesting. I mean, like, that lends to uh, um, having, like, a, a cool, like, cab-over RV, like, a, a bigger one if you want to, right? Mm -hmm. um, but also, um, you potentially, aftermarket, you, you, you can uh, put, like, a, a, what is that? A, a fifth wheel? Like, a fifth wheel yeah. on. Yeah, you can... Uh, use it for more recreational things. And that's kind of the thing that I like about this truck. I feel like Toyota is not really shy about that fact that they're really marketing to these people that are gonna use these for play. Yes. And honestly, I I could, I see that it might be a, a tough sell for a, a work truck, maybe. I mean, because you can't get something like a, on the current generation when you can still get the 4.7 liter V8, which is a lot cheaper option, yes. right, with 
essentially nothing and you can use that as a work truck I, who knows maybe it'll be priced right because everything's built in the US it's uh, it's an American designed engineered built truck but um, I think to what you're saying there's no real cheap stripper model we don't have pricing yet I'll put it at the end of the video but there's no you know like small engine stripped out truck it's got one engine choice and and also there's no big turbo diesel so if you want needed a work truck that really has to haul heavy heavy loads this will haul 12,000 pounds now with the, the highest spec motor um, which is competitive with the rest of the class from Ram and Chevy but there's no 35,000 pound you know option our drive on the highway of exposition complete we arrived at our destination and hopped in a different truck for the off-roading portion of the day all right, well now we're in the off-road component of the day. Uh, Larry's outside shooting, getting some shots. So there's a, a slow rock portion, a little articulation section. That's when you know you're going hard, sir, when you honk the horn. Man, blast these logs are no joke. They just jumped out of nowhere. Yeah, and then a pretty severe water crossing. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, so right now we're approaching this tight left-hand turn and then a pretty steep rocky section that is designed to test the truck's crawl control. Basically like most modern 4x4s, it will help you because it will send power to the wheel that has most grip, um, send braking to the tire that's slipping, and just helps you go up or down challenging terrain. Um, this is the Tundra SR5 off-road, TRD off-road. We were in a limited before. There's a couple levels to the TRD off-road. I'm not gonna be able to go through all of the different little specifications and differences between them but the TRD Pro is the one that usually gets all the press and you see all the photos and it's got like black trim and red stuff on it uh, this has the electronic locking differential it's got the different four-wheel drive modes it's got the crawl control um, but the interior is pretty basic that's the really big difference it also has normal wheels and tires they look like all seasons almost. steering is super light because it's electronically assisted so I'm pressing the gas I mean, it's, wow. So uh, I didn't really notice it intervening, which I guess is what you want. When I pressed the gas harder, it went faster. I was expecting something more like, uh, no matter how much I press the gas, it's always gonna be moving up at three miles per hour, but it accelerated a little bit. What I did notice is there was zero wheel spin, zero issue. I mean, all of these electronics and sensors and things are basically making it easier for people to go over challenging terrain or down challenging terrain. Um, taking away a little bit of that fear that you might have if you're an amateur off-roader like myself. So this truck has the optional 14-inch screen. Um, the Tundras come with an eight-plus-inch screen. This one has the big 14, which is laid out laterally instead of vertically. Uh, the Ram has the tablet or screen mounted vertically. This and the F-150, they do the sideways um, orientation. I prefer the vertical one because I noticed in the F-150 that when I needed to reach the controls in this corner, I actually had to stretch for them. This seems like it's actually mounted a little bit closer. Maybe it's just the shape of the dashboard, so I like that. Uh, what I also like is that this has the optional off-road assistance cams, so I can use this to determine if there are obstacles near the front wheels, um, near the side of the truck, the back of the truck. I can change the angle. I can actually pan the, uh, the camera from left to right and if I wanna see more of the left side of the truck than the right side of the truck. And then, of course, I have my tilt and lean gauges, which uh, basically are used to tell me when I think I'm about to die. Because if I get five degrees of lean, I think we're about to tip over, and the gauge is there to say, no, 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 you're just a wuss, and you've never done this before, go back to the street where you belong. Go back to your tarmac trap. Whoa, dear. Whoa. Oh, dear. Um, all right, that was, well, you're a dad. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> This being on stock tires, they're, they're essentially like, it's like ice skates. I mean, there's no knobbiness at all. It's just yeah. a rubber um, inner tube in that <laughs> regard. When you're going over these hard rocks, um, it's slipping and it's doing everything it can, every wheel individually to get us up these obstacles. Yeah, well that's yeah. what's impressive is that the computers can figure out how much grip they have and then apply torque where they need to, where they need to, to help you get up despite having what I would say are less than optimal tires for this environment. I mean, this isn't a really challenging terrain with the exception, I think, of that rock hill uh, mm -hmm. climb. You know, you could do this in like a two-wheel drive pickup truck, honestly, but most people that buy these aren't doing stuff like this. Right. You know, they'll go down a fire road to go camping. That's about it. Right. But the next thing is the articulation section. I did watch Larry come through this 
These are some really deep trenches, really natural formations of the land. I'm not sure what kind of geothermal activity created these uh, trenches. It may have been that bobcat volcano over there. Woo! Oh, really there. oh my God, yeah. There. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, you're rocking me to sleep. So, um, this doesn't have a snorkel. No, but we, and we don't have snorkels either. No, uh, we don't have O2 canisters either. Right. Um, but we are gonna do a water crossing. Yeah. But I'm gonna get out and wait across okay. and get a shot of you crossing. Okay, all right, cool. Okay, door unlocked. Definitely keeping it in four low for this. Uh, VSC on and I have all the sensors on right now. I'm not gonna use crawl mode because I might wanna go a little faster. Okay, approaching stream. I wanna get it, you don't wanna go too fast because if you end up in a hole in there, you hit a rock, you can get stuck and that can be a big problem. Okay, we're in it, we're in it, we're in it. Oh. A little bit of mud on the outside. Oh, and we're done. From there, we got into a Red Tundra Limited to try out Toyota's Straight Path Assist system, which is meant to help you reversing your trailer. Uh, but first, I'm just gonna try and back up in a straight line using the mirrors and my hands and my monkey brain. Larry Chen actually set it up in a straight line for me. Let's see if I can, I'm gonna mess it up and see if I can fix it. So it's turning a little bit. Granted, it was already set up straight. So my real question with these kind of assistance systems, this one in particular, is if I'm getting it wrong, will it fix that for me? Okay. All right, so the truck right now is like maybe three or four degrees off from the trailer's angle. Trailer's pointed fairly straight. I'm just gonna idle back and reverse. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna add a little throttle because otherwise we're gonna be here till next year. It's steering itself. Trailer's going fairly straight. So this uses the camera to determine where the corners of the trailer are, which is probably challenging with this Airstream because it's round. Um, Ford had this system first, but you had to put stickers on the tongue or the frame of the trailer so that uh, the camera could see it. And yeah, and now the trailer's starting to go a little bit too far to the right. So it's going a little off to the right, isn't it? I've now done this and Larry did it, Larry Chen did it as well. Um, and both of us, when we were backing up using the automatic system, the trailer started to go off the path a little bit. And what they say it's supposed to do is the truck is supposed to follow the path of the trailer. But right now, if I look at you know this keep, overhead icon. If you keep going, I bet you it'll keep going off. It'll keep going more off. Like, yeah. if you look right now, the red line is straight and the truck is actually off. So I would call that system imperfect. All right, guys, so this is the end of the video. We're on our way home. We drove a bunch of different trim levels of the new Tundra and funny enough we're actually heading back in last generation's Tundra that's what they had available for us to drive back we were left a little bit early so here we are but it actually is a really good opportunity because we're able to experience for me I'm able to experience the old lease spring setup and for like three minutes I was like ah oh, it seems, feels pretty smooth and then we went over a bridge and the back end of the truck was bumping like this and my seat was wiggling on the seat I said oh okay yeah the new truck is quieter and it does ride way way better yeah, yeah, I mean, that's really the biggest difference. And I mean, welcome to the normal truck experience. Yeah. This is what we've experienced for so many years, for so long, and it's just normal. It's just something that I got used to. But uh, uh, getting in the new truck today was actually pretty interesting to kind of see how much they improved on that. Yeah, um, Any, it feels like most pickup trucks made after the year 2020 or 21 if that's only your experience, you're having a very spoiled, luxurious ride and experience with trucks because they used to bounce a lot, you know, laden or unladen. You know, they're just, they've gotten better and better and better and nicer and nicer. And it's a really good thing because they used to be pretty uncomfortable to, to drive, especially, you know, if you drive like an F350 or a 3500, if you didn't have a trailer on it or like a thousand pounds in the bed, it rode worse because you needed those really stiff springs oh, yeah. to support that weight. Um, and now we're having a nice, uh, the compromise has gotten a lot better. Um, things I didn't like about the new truck, I don't want to make it all flower, sunshine, and rainbows. Um, I thought some of the storage component um, areas are small and strange. Uh, the door pockets are really narrow, very shallow, and 
almost unreachable when the door is closed. You, if you put a bottle of water in there when the door is open, if you try to grab it when the door is closed, you're probably going to get your hand stuck like, uh, like Winnie the Pooh. The steering is super light. It's really light in this. The new one is an electronic system. It's numb. It's crazy light. I mean, it drives like an old luxury car. Steering feel doesn't really matter in a pickup truck as long as it's accurate, in my, in my opinion, the rack speed is good, but that's just something to know. Um, and the seats in this are definitely worse than the new truck. I thought the new truck had a much more supportive seat. Um, otherwise, oh, and the trailer thing, the, the reverse assist seemed to be having an issue. He said it was that specific truck that wasn't calibrated perfectly. I hope that's true. I can't really comment on what a truck that has the correct calibration will do when you reverse it. But I think what I was hoping for, and you as well, is you know, when will it be able to help us back down a curved driveway or something like that? You know, the thing is, honestly, so much of that comes down to just practicing. I mean, it's a safety thing personally and for everyone else on the road for you to practice actually towing backing up through going in and out of the gas stations backing up into a driveway from a street yeah um, for you to be able to do that accurately and quickly it really is not about blocking traffic it's it's really uh important just for driving skill you know we need these skills just to operate something which is a trailer yeah and then that allows you to tow um, you know, small trailers, big trailers, whatever, uh, boats, all of that. When there's these electronic nannies and you're relying on them, it can, I don't know if that's a very good idea, honestly, because what if you get into a rental truck, you try to do the same thing and it doesn't have that. If you're gonna buy a boat or buy an RV, like you should go practice somewhere and learn how to do it correctly before you're just in the campground or at the boat ramp and you know, you're messing up your day and everybody else's. It's kind of like how there's auto parallel park, right? Yeah. You know, I know that's a thing and it exists and I could see potentially some people who may need that, but it's also good to be able to parallel park correctly. You know, it's a basic skill. It's a basic maneuver that just allows you to use your vehicle safely. Right. And it's a good point if you get it, because if you get a rental car that doesn't have that feature and you go to a parallel park, you go, oh no, this doesn't have the button. How will I get into this spot? Oh, and the other thing, no more V8. This is a big experiment for Toyota. They're switching to a twin turbo V6 engine. And we've seen how many stories of like a Tundra owner that drove a million miles. Yes. I mean, the, that engine has proven itself. They've been making it for a long, long, long time. Look, it, it is the UN truck of choice. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, it, it's just so reliable. You could go through the desert, you could go through all sorts of climates or whatever. It's just a reliable vehicle. And outside of the US, the LC200 with that 5.7 liter V8, which is in this truck, um, it, it's a, you could get a stripper model, you know, with nothing in it. And it's just this reliable SUV that has, that's body on frame. Um, with that said, the, the 3.5 liter V6, you know, that could be just as reliable, but only time will tell, I feel like. It could be. I, I want it to be because I want Toyota and, you know, similar in a similar way, like Honda over there. Uh, these companies that are known for having the most reliable power plants in the world are having a switch to turbocharging, and I hope they maintain their reputation because it's part of why I love them. But we'll see. With that I, said, you had a chance to floor both, and it, it just the V8s just drive different. Yeah, they do. Because it, it, as soon as those explosions start happening in uh, in the cylinders, you feel like you feel it moving forward. And granted, the turbocharged power plant does kick in quickly. Max uh, torque happens at twenty four hundred RPM, but but the V 8s the NA stuff, just feels like it like feels like it's going a little yeah. quicker. You know, yeah. it feels yeah. just a little bit more instant. Yeah, even though it makes less power, less torque, and it's slower. Uh, we didn't get to try the har the hybrid assist one. I guess we'll have to get one of those as a press truck and we'll see. Maybe that has uh, that torque fill that we all want from um, modern hybrid power plants. The smart thing to do probably would have been for us to drag race yeah. this one versus the new one, you know, just heads up. Yeah. And maybe also rolling. Um, but yeah, I, I know for, for certain, for certain, the new one's faster. Um, so anyway, that'll conclude our Tundra review. Thank you guys for watching. 
Thank you guys for watching Larry's channel, um, Autofocus, and uh, thanks for listening to the podcast, all that stuff. Go check out Larry's Instagram. You probably are already following it, and if you're not, what are you doing with Instagram? And uh, we'll see you later. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off the Record app available in the Android and iOS store, or go to offtherecord.com slash TST.